Okay, everyone, this is a review of the Ultra Montblanc Boa. Uh, this is an amazing shoe. I uh, can't wait to bring this review to you. However, you may notice one issue. This is a pretty fresh looking shoe. Not many miles on this shoe. Well, it's because I haven't run my 200 miles yet with them. Uh, the good news for you is that that's going to be over pretty quickly. Uh, the bad news for me is that uh, this is the start of my 200 mile race, so uh, it's going to take me a little time to get it done. Uh, but I plan on taking some video throughout the race, uh, providing some commentary, and uh, giving my overall impression of the Ultra Mont Blanc Boa. So, uh, you know, wish me luck. Uh, for you, it's going to be pretty quick. For me, uh, it's going to be a pretty long couple days, so uh, check in when I can. Coast to coast. Coast to coast. Oh, let's touch that bad boy right here. Boom. Boom. Freaking proud of this dude right here. Best teammate a dude could ask for, man. <laughs> wow. What a weekend. Uh, I hope you guys were comfortable because that, uh, that really sucked. <laughs> the good news is my buddy Matt Clapper and I were able to achieve the course record beating out David Goggins, so we're super excited about that. But you're probably wondering, how'd those Mont Blancs do? Well, to give you a summary, they make you faster than David Goggins. <laughs> I actually think that's Ultra's new design slogan. Joking aside, the Ultra Mont Blanc were the perfect shoe for my race, and I couldn't imagine going 200 miles in any other shoe. But I don't think they're the best shoe for every single occasion, and there are some negatives that might make them uh, not a good choice for you depending on your applications. I'm really not trying to be vague here, but it's going to take some time for me to describe the pros and the cons of the Ultra Mont Blanc Boas. So if you stick around, I'm going to go over the features, the fit and feel, some of the negatives, and hopefully help you decide if the Ultra Mont Blancs are the right shoe for you. But first, a sweet ass intro. To start off with features, let's look at the most prominent, the BOA adjustment. These two BOA dials allow you to lock in the perfect fit and feel for your Mont Blancs, and they are my absolute new favorite feature, and I hope to see this feature on more shoes going forward. I, I like it that much. It's incredibly simple to use, having the wearer turn this dial mechanism until the shoe locks into that perfect fit. It's actually a ratchet mechanism, so as you turn it, you'll hear a little clicks knowing that it's locking in place. And it's a nice little tactile feedback to know just exactly how far in you've locked that shoe. If you found that you've tightened it too much, just pull up, release, push in, re-tighten. It's as simple as that, very quick, very fast. It did take me a couple of uses to get used to locking each foot in perfectly, but once I knew exactly how to put the shoes on, turn those dials, it became a super quick process. During my 200 mile race, this feature was most useful when I was taking my shoes off to re -lube my feet, change my socks, or just taking a 10 minute break and I wanted to kick my shoes off. It's such a fast process taking the shoes off and putting it back on that it really turned foot care into a nice quick process instead of a burden like it usually is for me. So I attribute this uh, to my feet looking so good after the race. I just took the time, fixed my feet, put the shoes on, got back on, and was off and going. In a 200 mile race, you have more time to stop, relax, fix your feet, but in a 50K, a 50 miler, a uh, 100K, you're gonna wanna have fast, quick stops, kick the shoes off, fix your feet, put them back on, and the bowl lets you do just that. The Mont Blancs feature ultra standard foot shape. I do prefer the more traditional foot shape of the Lone Peaks. It has a bit of a wider toe box. However, the upper mesh of the Mont Blancs allows your toes to uh, stretch and wiggle a bit. So the standard feels right at home with Ultra's vision for this shoe, which is a fast, light, sleek trail racing shoe. Overall, the Mont Blancs feel very snug, but not confining. That upper mesh really lets your toes breathe, and it lets your toes splay a bit. So I will say that while I am a fan of the traditional foot shape, the standard foot shape that the Mont Blanc has uh, feels great and uh, wasn't too tight or confining on my feet. Additionally in the race, I was able to wear lightweight zero cushion running socks as well as thicker hiking socks. 
and both were very comfortable the entire time. I will say I owe that to the BOA system, and I think the BOA system works very well in conjunction with the standard foot shape for the Mont Blancs. The outsole is a Vibram light base, and I will say that this outsole did uh, amazing for my application. It's very light, but it's very durable. I encountered uh, streets, mud, dirt, a little bit of rocks, sand, and it handled all terrain very, very well. However, when the train got more technical, when there was roots, when there was a few jagged rocks on a few sections of the course, I definitely felt that through my foot. A shoe like the Lone Peaks, they have a rock plate in them, so they're gonna absorb all that, that pain and punishment you put into it. This light base, you're gonna feel all of the trail. Uh, every stick, every rock, every crevice, uh, you're gonna feel that through this Vibram light base. In my experience, these lighter soles lead to increased foot fatigue over uh, longer durations. So when there is rocky terrain, when there are a lot of technical trails, you're definitely gonna feel that through your foot. The Ultra Ego Max insole continues to feel amazing. When I first put these on, I was so impressed at not only the cushioning, but the responsiveness. It, it really felt like I was wearing a road shoe with just a thicker sole. When I went out for my first run with the Mont Blancs, I just hit a few miles on the road, and I, I was so impressed at how much like a road shoe they felt that I was kind of worried they would feel bad on the trails. Uh, like I said, very responsive, felt, just felt good. This really came in handy for my race where a lot of it was on paved trails and streets. So I wasn't dreading those miles that I'd have to hit the pavement on. Uh, it really felt amazing. Uh, to keep bringing up the Lone Peak, only because that's my favorite shoe, whenever I've had to run on pavement in those shoes, it's been an absolute nightmare. Uh, that rock plate, while it's good for absorbing rocks, sticks, all that hard terrain, it, it really makes your feet take a beating on that pavement. So knowing that I have the Mont Blancs that can really take that pavement and leave my feet feeling good, uh, that, that definitely puts these uh, in the category uh, for my favorite shoe, just, just based on the fact that I can hit any terrain with them. The stack height comes in at an impressive 30 millimeters. As a reference, the Torin 6s, one of my favorite road running shoes, has a stack height of 28 millimeters. The Mont Blanc comes in at 11.2 ounces, with the Torrent 6 weighing 9.9 .9 ounces. It wasn't until writing this review that I noticed the weight difference between the shoes, and it's it blows my mind that there's only a little more than an ounce difference between uh, those two shoes. Uh, honestly, it really does show though, not only when you're holding the shoe, but also when you put it on. Like I said, when I went out for that run on the road, I wasn't only shocked at the cushioning and the responsiveness, but also how light the shoe was. It really does feel like a road shoe, and I'm very impressed that they were able to get uh, this sort of features into this light of a package. I'm going to say this right now, this upper mesh, while it is very light, it feels very good, it is so freaking fragile. While it's great that the Mont Blancs are so light, uh, this mesh, that's going to be where the shoe fails. As you can see, I snagged a sand spur about mile 20, 25, and it, it ripped the mesh pretty darn good. Uh, I was ready to give the shoe a terrible review at that point, switch them out at some point, because uh, I just thought they were going to start falling apart. However, they did last another 180 miles, and they still look, I'm going to say decent. Uh, I thought that little hole was going to start spreading, ripping more. It did not, so that is a good sign. But as you can see, the stitching is starting to fray, the mesh is starting to uh, pill up and, and tear, so uh, that's definitely going to go under the negatives. Contrary to the mesh, the BOA system feels amazing. It, it feels extremely strong. I was never in fear of these little laces ripping. I'm not gonna lie, I've never used a BOA system before, not even on biking shoes, so I honestly didn't know how it was gonna hold up. Uh, the whole race, it did amazing. I only had one issue, and that's when it got kind of caked with dirt and it wouldn't tighten up, but uh, just knocked the dirt off, it washed out a little bit and uh, it turned just fine after that. So this BOA system, it's strong, it's incredible, it's definitely gonna outlive the shoe, that's not gonna be a point of failure. The outsoles did amazing as well. It's got that Vibram white base, so I was sure these were gonna get eaten and torn up and there's gonna be chunks missing out of it, but for about 40 miles on paved trails and about 160 miles on off-road conditions, uh, this Vibram white base is looking great. It's got many, many more miles in it. And uh, there's a bit, you can tell there's a bit of wear, obviously it went through 200 miles straight, but uh, in terms of how it held up overall, very impressed with this outsole. As for overall build quality, I'd say the Mont Blancs are definitely a well-made shoe. However, if you're gonna compare it to a shoe like the Lone Peaks, uh, it would fail miserably. Uh, the Lone Peaks are a shoe 
that I could take, I could run through a field of thorns, I could kick rocks all day, uh, just beat the hell out of them, and the Lone Peaks would come out looking great. Mont Blancs, they would get torn to shreds. However, you need to keep in mind that while I do say that the Lone Peaks are a bit sturdier than the Mont Blancs, there is a tool for every single occasion. And a good analogy would be, uh, if you're trying to hammer in a nail with a screwdriver, you're gonna have a pretty fucked up screwdriver. <laughs> so it's important to choose the right tool for the job. Uh, and I'll get into that uh, later on in the review. Okay, so you may be saying, thanks for all the info, Mike. Thanks for the features. Thanks for the build quality. But let's quit the bullshit. How do the Mont Blanc Boas feel over a 200 mile race? What's it like to wear them? Uh, put, me, put me in your shoes, please. <laughs> Bottom line, the Mont Blanc Boas felt absolutely amazing. Whether I was on the road or the trails, they just felt good. My feet felt good wearing them. The BOA system also felt amazing, especially when my feet were swelling up or when I was changing into a thicker pair of hiking socks. They just allowed me to dial in that perfect fit. So over the entire 200 miles, I always had a shoe that fit perfectly to how my feet felt at the time. They were also so light that I noticed very little foot fatigue over the entire race. Uh, additionally, I only stubbed my toe once the entire race and uh, usually I'm stubbing my toes everywhere. And while this route was not the most technical uh, and I don't have any definitive evidence, I do think that the lightweight of the shoe allowed me to uh, traverse a bit easier and avoid some of those conditions where I'd stub my toe with a, with a heavier shoe. It was an absolute pleasure to wear the Mont Blancs and in terms of the Across Florida 200, I could not imagine wearing any other shoe for an entire 200 mile distance uh, without having to change it out for something else. I also need to mention that I only received three blisters in total for this race, and while I do attribute that to my good foot care and my attentiveness to my foot health, I need to give credit to that upper mesh which allowed my toes to wiggle and breathe, as well as that BOA system which allowed me to dial in that perfect fit the entire race. I also need to note that all three of those blisters were on my left foot, with my right foot being completely unscathed the entire race. Uh, that's, <laughs> that's truly incredible for a 200 mile race and uh, I'm gonna chalk those three blisters up to shitty running mechanics, but the fact that I can go almost 200 miles and have very few blisters and have all my toenails intact is uh, that's, that's quite a statement and I'm pretty amazed. As you can tell, that upper mesh is the first negative for me. This is a premium running shoe with a premium price and I expect it to be built a little bit better to handle those conditions and not uh, rip so easily, especially within the first 20, 30 miles of a race, uh, they got really beat up really quick. Additionally, this upper mesh holds a lot of moisture. So when my feet did get wet, I noticed that this moisture in the upper mesh uh, was soaking into my socks. While they did drain and dry much quicker than compared to your traditional road shoe, I did notice that it held a bit more moisture than some of the other trail shoes that Ultra has to offer. So if you're looking for a shoe to tackle rough, overgrown, nasty environments, kind of like the Barkley uh, Fall Classic of the Barkley Marathons, uh, this will not be the shoe for you. However, if you're running on well-kept trails and cleared paths, the Mont Blancs will be just fine. Another potential negative is that light outsole. Uh, while I liked it from my application, if you're running on a rocky, rugged environment, you're gonna feel those miles. For instance, I ran in the Georgia Jewel 100 this year, which is on the Pinhoti Trail, and I had my trusty Lone Peaks and my feet felt good the entire time. Uh, that's a very, very, very rocky trail and your feet take a pounding. If I had the Mont Blancs, I think my feet would be pretty fatigued and in a pretty rough shape by the end of that race. Therefore, if you're gonna run on a race where the trails are highly technical or there's a lot of rocks, a lot of roots, the Mont Blanc Boas might not be the shoe for you. However, I am saying that with a, with a 100 mile, with a 100K race in mind, so for a 50K or even a 50 miler, this may not be too big of an issue for you. Finally, that large stack height may be a negative for you as well. At 30 millimeters, you're definitely getting that comfort, but you're sacrificing a bit of security. While I haven't run any highly rocky or technical trails, uh, there were a few occasions where I stepped on a root or you know, a rock on the Florida trail, and I, it felt, uh, felt like my ankle could have given a little twist there. Uh, I didn't twist my ankle, I didn't get hurt, but I'm imagining back to when I ran the Georgia Jewel and was really bombing down those mountains in that final 30 miles, jumping from rock to rock, and I don't think I could have done that if I was wearing the Mont Blancs. I think I would have uh, been a bit concerned over twisting an ankle and ending my race early. 
Well, I did wear the Lone Peaks during that race and they are only five millimeters shorter in stack height. They, you feel more connected to the trail when you're wearing them. It's hard to explain. I don't know if it's the, the lack of cushion or the rock plate, but I just felt like I had a secure footing no matter what environment I was on. When I was going through the water, when I was hitting rocks, when I was going down, going up, uh, they just, I felt like I was more connected to the trail. Uh, it's kind of hard to explain. Uh, the Mont Blancs, with that cushioning, uh, I, I just didn't feel as connected to the trail, which isn't a bad thing, but in a race where you need to watch your footing at all times, uh, I could see that being a bit of a concern, either physically or even mentally, uh, worrying about twisting your ankle the whole time. So again, if you're not running an overly technical, really hard trail, the Mont Blancs are gonna do just fine, but if you're hitting a very steep, very technical, very challenging trail, uh, you may wanna test them out or you may wanna go with a different option. So who is this shoe for? I would choose the Mont Blanc Boa under a few scenarios. The first scenario is if you plan on running well-maintained or even just slightly technical trails. Uh, the Mont Blanc is a great shoe and it'll handle most trails fine. Like I said, those highly technical trails, uh, they may give you a bit of trouble. The next scenario is if you're gonna cover any road sections, I cannot overstate how good these things feel on the road. They, they feel amazing on the road. Again, the Lone Peaks, they, they mashed my feet. Uh, during the Cruel Jewel, there was a few mile sections where you had to go on the road, and I was dreading those sections on the out and on the back. Uh, with the Mont Blanc Boas, as I mentioned, on this race, it was 40 to 60 miles of either road or paved trail, and those miles were an absolute pleasure. Uh, they just felt amazing. The next scenario is if you're going for the fastest time you possibly can. These are by no means the Nike Alpha Fly of the trail running world, but they are a fast, lightweight shoe, and you can, you can haul some serious ass in them. Not only will they have you moving fast, but they'll make those pit stops where you have to take care of your feet, change your socks that much quicker to do that BOA system. So for a race where you're concerned with any sort of time, these are an excellent choice, and they'll get you across the finish line that much faster. And finally, who will not see success from the Mont Blanc Boas? Who's gonna spend $210 and just be hating life because they spent twice the price as uh, most other trail running shoes? First would be anyone taking a run or a hike in an overgrown deep woods trail. These are just not designed to take that punishment. Uh, they're gonna fall apart, uh, this mesh is gonna fail, uh, it's gonna snag. Uh, I, I just really would not take these on a rugged backpacking trip, on a rugged hike. Uh, there are plenty of other shoes for that. Uh, this is not them. Rocky or technical terrain may give you some issues as well. As I mentioned, that outsole, very light, you're gonna feel it. For a 50K or less, probably doesn't matter. For a 50 mile or plus, uh, you may want something that reduces that foot fatigue. Additionally, that stack height's gonna make your foot pretty uneasy on some of those, some of those rocks and that rugged trail. I'd be worried about twisting an ankle. So any race on rocky, rugged terrain, uh, I, may, I may skip the Mont Blancs. Next, I would be cautious against any overly wet terrain. The Mont Blanc Boas aren't especially great for drainage. Uh, it's gonna retain moisture. Uh, that mesh is gonna hold moisture. It just doesn't drain as well as some other shoes. I'm mostly talking about Florida races when I talk about the overly wet scenarios. There's this one race in Florida, the Lake to Ocean. It's 100K and it's not rare that the entire race is just completely underwater. So I, I probably wouldn't choose the Mont Blanc Boas for a race like that, but if you're a runner that has an occasional stream crossing, running in the rain, they'll, they'll be just fine for that. But if you're doing a race where your feet are gonna be submerged for long periods of time, I'm not sure if the Boas are gonna be, be great for those scenarios. So I hope that helped you decide if the Mont Blanc Boas are worth that high price point. As mentioned, for me, for my scenario, they were the perfect shoe, and as a testament to that, uh, I made it across the entire state of Florida, and I still have good things to say about this shoe. So, for most runners, I think the Mont Blanc will fit your needs, and I do not think you'll be disappointed by the purchase. However, <laughs> for half the price, depending on a sale, you can get many of Ultra's other trail shoe offerings. So, if money or longevity is a deciding factor for you, then uh, that would be a pretty big deciding factor. For me, I need a single pair of shoes that could get me all the way across the state of Florida in an attempt to get a course record. So 
For me, the money was well spent and I got every penny out of these shoes. I'm very happy I went with the Mont Blancs. They are probably my new favorite trail racing shoe. I think they have surpassed the Lone Peaks. However, I will still be using those Lone Peaks for a lot of my races where I hit the technical terrain. I like going to Georgia, doing some of those crazy races. So I'll be slapping on a pair of Lone Peaks for that. But any trails that aren't technical and I need to really get a fast course time, uh, I'll be sliding on these Mont Blanc Boas for sure. So with that, I'm gonna thank you so much for watching. Uh, I'd hope to get a like and subscribe, but if you don't want to, it's totally cool. I'm just happy that you stuck with me this far and uh, put up with me talking about a pair of shoes for <laughs> as long as I as long as I have. If you want, you can check out my short video I posted on the Across Border 200. I do have a much longer documentary style film coming out in the coming weeks, but I threw this one together as a, a fun glimpse into Matt Clapper and I's adventure, and uh, I really hope you check it out. Thanks again, and as always, I can't wait to see you do something amazing. Also, check out this buckle. I know you've been looking at it. You've been looking at it the whole time, haven't you? I know I have. <laughs> okay, I'm not using that. That's that's creepy. That's extremely creepy and not not a way to end a video.